four colors? That... No, it's it. The, the specific four colors for four color printing are cyan, which is a blue, magenta, which is a pinkish red, uh, yellow, and black. And the only reason black is used is because, in theory, if you take equal parts of cyan, magenta, and yellow and mix them together, you're supposed to get black, but you don't. Yeah, you get a muddy looking brown. So what, what uh, we actually do is actually just introduce black into there to get it to a pure black. <laughs> And are there pure yellow magenta and cyan? Yes. So, I mean, there's like an established. This yes. Is exactly yeah, it's actually, yeah. if you want to know, it's the swap. That's the standard web offset press okay. uh, system, which actually determines the pure of cyan, magenta, and yellow. So, I mean, if, if you uh, mix something like yellow and blue and cyan, Get green. Yeah. So does that count as a uh, does that kind of cost you extra? Or, well, or if you're right. If you're running it as four color and you already have a photograph in that, uh, then you would just mix that green with that with those with like that cyan and yellow. But if, let's say your logo is just green by itself, instead of running it as a four color job, you just want your logo and maybe some black type on there. You would run a stop color and then just run the black. Thing. So it's like two color job instead of being a four color job. Things to keep in mind when purchasing print, that being one of them. You know, if you, if you can run it as a one or two color, you're going to save yourself you know, quite a bit of money. Another thing to keep in mind is paper. Um, if you've ever, if anybody's gone to get anything printed, uh, there are literally thousands of different paper styles, and you can mix and match the way those different paper styles go together. I mean, you have different weights, you have different types, you have uncoated, glossy math. You have different colors. You can get a bright white, a natural white, which is kind of a cream color. You can go into blues, reds, purples, greens. Pretty much paper manufacturers cover the gamut. And uh, when you're looking for paper, that's why the paper manufacturers develop these. And there's just swatch books which you can go through and choose your colors, choose your paper, choose your different finishes. You know, you have uh, a smooth finish, you have blade finishes, you have Linen finishes covers, covers the uh, covers the gamut, and uh, that's actually one of the reasons why a lot of times I'm asked, you know, if you have a price list of what you do. Well, I can come up with a price list that could be 50 pages long and still never cover all the different combinations that, that are possible. Uh, now, if you happen to do files yourself. On page 20, there's actually a checklist, which is good to go by if you're doing digital files yourself. Some things to keep in mind are when you're printing something onto an offset press, a uh, very important property is when the di digital images just make sure that they have a proper resolution. All resolution is is the amount of pixels per inch that makes up that image. Ideally, without getting into it too much, uh, what you have is the dots that are laid out are actually laid out in a, in a, in a pattern in a row, and you have those are lines per inch. So if you're running 150 lines per inch, you want the resolution of at least 300 PPI for your image, or DPI. The DPI, you guys, mix the two together. But in, in reality, in reality, when you're looking at an image on a computer screen, it's a pixel. It's a square that's making up that image with a certain amount of color and facial in it. And if you've ever taken anything to a, a printer, or uh, even print something off at home and it looks, you know, when you print it out a web page, you have to print out a web page and you get a little, you can actually see little squares and blockiness of the image. And that's the reason because of that. You're actually on the, on the web or on the internet, most of those web images are only 72 ppi, from ppi, and ideally you want 300 ppi when you're going to print the image to an offset press. And I think Jeff Kearney can get away with 150 ppi. Another thing to keep in mind is 
when you're submitting files to a printer, make sure you include the fonts that you used in your document, whether it be a Word document or a, we won't get into Word documents and printing, but it's, 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 never, it's never a pretty sight. Um, ideally, what a printer would like is, and this generally happens with if you're working with a designer, they will use one of the uh, main page layout programs and those lay everything out correctly. The problem with doing printing Word documents is if you transfer or send it to somebody else, you know, as you may or may not know, the, the page margins can change. And, uh, the, their version of the font can be slightly different than another person's version of the font, and you just, all of a sudden you start, you start getting the mess. Um, and the best way of avoiding a lot of that mess is either creating a PDF from the Word document that you're working on, uh, which when you create a PDF, it will actually embed it into the, embed the font into the file. So that way, when the printer gets it, he's just printing off. So you got all the information basically pressed, pressed into one nice, neat little package. And another, another thing to keep in mind is to communicate with the printer that you're using. Uh, let him know maybe when you, when you start working on the project, what you're going to be looking for, you know, some big paper, uh, and he'll let you know how he wants those files. You know, everything is just being done to make sure that everything is done in an error-free way. So that the piece that you're looking at is going to be constantly getting there. <laughs> Moving right along with design. Designs that I've seen that seem to that really work, you can keep the message simple. You keep it simple and clear and easy to understand, you're going to get a much higher response rate from either your potential customer if you're doing if you're dealing direct mail or even a brochure or business card, anything like that. Um, another thing to keep in mind is try to keep the colors complementary to each other. Uh, I've seen too often where people want, you know, like a purple and a pink together and you know it, 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 things don't always go well together. And also something to keep in mind when you're designing a piece is if you're going to be finishing the piece at all. So in other words, it's going to be folded at some point, it's going to be drilled, or it's going to have holes in it, for putting into a three-ring binder, is it going to be stapled together, is it uh, going to be laminated, is it going to be die cut, is something going to be done to it after the piece is printed. And when you're designing it, the designer or the person who's laying out the page has to keep that in mind because problems can happen later on after the piece is already done printed, and then now somebody takes it someplace else, get it folded, and you start getting, you look at the front of it, and it's all off-center on the front of a brochure. Okay. Yeah. Any questions so far? No? Then we'll jump right into direct mail and mailing.